battle for the Cosmic Mountain. Skywatch TV News for Tuesday, October 6th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. In studio, a special guest, author of a new book that uh, we recommend for your reference library. It's The Unseen Realm, Recovering the Supernatural Worldview of the Bible. We welcome Dr. Michael Heiser to the studio. Mike, Derek, welcome. thanks for having me. Uh, the Cosmic Mountain is a theme that uh, you, you deal with in The Unseen Realm. Mm -hmm. And it helps to understand better what exactly is going on from basically the biblical narrative of history mm -hmm. and also prophetically what is mm -hmm. going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, prophetically, uh, we, we're, we're told that uh, the forces of, of Yahweh and the forces of evil will meet for a final uh, apocalyptic cataclysmic battle mm -hmm. at uh, Armageddon, mm -hmm. which traditionally we've been taught is the Valley of Megiddo. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how does that square with a real understanding of the cosmic mountain? Because there's, it's the valley of Megiddo. Right. <laughs> what, what's going on here? Yeah, how, do we, how do we get, get what this? What happened to, to the mountain? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the short answer is that uh, the, the final conflict, again, what we think of as Armageddon, uh, is not going to take place at Megiddo. And we know that, again, from a number of, of reasons in the biblical text that I get into, you know, in considerable detail in the book. But for those who the cosmic mountain idea are new, is new to. Basically, this refers to Yahweh's living space, Yahweh's domain. And where God lives, that is where his counsel is because that's how he runs the cosmos, again, with and through his divine counsel. And so you get, again, certain accrued terminology to that idea in the Old Testament. And one of those terms, I'll, well, let's just talk about two of them that are kind of important. One is the heights of the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Canaanite literature, the heights of the north, the Yarkate Tzaphon in Hebrew was the domain of Baal and his council. Mm -hmm. Now, again, everybody in the ancient world sort of knows who Baal is. And he's this sort of ubiquitous you know, figure. But in Ugaritic literature, that's the literature of ancient Syria, a specific city in ancient Syria. This is mentioned several times, again, as being the dominion of Baal. And Baal in, in Canaanite thinking is the sort of the, the top guy. He is, he is actually called the king of the gods, again, under the sovereignty of El. But nevertheless, he's the one who runs everything. Mm -hmm. Well, in Psalm 48, we actually get Zion referred to as the heights of the north, the Yarkate Tzaphon. And if you're familiar with the background material, you might say, wow, what in the world is the biblical writer doing using a term that's associated with the, you know, the, the place where Baal lives and mm -hmm. runs everything and sort of transferring it over to Zion? Well, it, it's important because the biblical writers do this a lot. They will take phrases from Canaanite literature or concepts that the people living during those times would have known very well and incorporate them into their writings. And then they displace Baal. They displace the deity. They, they dismiss him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically kick him off the throne mm -hmm. and then put the, put Yahweh, the God of Israel on it. So this is why, you know, Zion is called, you know, uh, the, the beautiful city in the heights of the North and all that stuff, because Yahweh is the one who runs the cosmos, runs everything from his cosmic mountain. It isn't this flunky over here, mm -hmm. Baal. Well, that becomes important when you look at revelation, we're told that John is explicit. He says in the Hebrew tongue, you know, the, the place is Armageddon. If you actually dig into the original text, you know, past the English, you find out that you have two terms there. Har is the first syllable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Har means mountain. And then you think, well, MGD, that must be Megiddo. Okay. Now in, in the book, I talk about MGD and where you get the N at the end and all that stuff. But the problem is in Hebrew, when Hebrew sort of gets moved into English in, through transliteration, there are two letters that have the G sound. Hmm. Okay. Gimel is one and that would be MGD, but the other one is Ryan. So if you use that spelling, Mem, Ryan, Dalit, you have Har, Moraid. And you say, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what that is? That is the height of, of the north. It, it's another word for the place where the assembled council meet in Isaiah 14. The Mount of Assembly. The Mount of Assembly. That's what it is, where, again, the divine rebel that the, the New Testament associates with Satan or Lucifer, 
this is the account where he, he says, again, that the divine rebel says, I will be like the most high. I will ascend above the stars of El. Okay, I will, again, take my seat on the Mount of Assembly. Right, well, the Mount of Assembly is where God lives. It's where he runs everything. And that is not Megiddo. Mm-hmm. It's Jerusalem. So the final conflict is not a battle at Megiddo. Megiddo isn't even a mountain. I mean, if you, if you go there, you see it's, it's a plain. It's this huge, expansive plain. But the Hebrew term, and John says, look, this is a Hebrew term in the Hebrew tongue, is Har Moreh, the Mount of Assembly. It points to Jerusalem as the, the, the place that's surrounded. We get that in, later in Revelation, where the forces of evil are surrounding Zion, again, for the, the sort of all the marbles shooting match. Hmm. In the unseen realm, you, you kind of unpack the, the divine counsel paradigm, the understanding mm-hmm. that God is a, one of a pantheon of gods, but not in the way we might understand right. a yeah, polytheistic not, pantheon. Right. He is like the most high, and then there are other lesser mm-hmm. Elohim, lesser gods, if you will, small g gods. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that conflict play out in the New Testament, and, and how, how would we recognize uh, th- this concept in, in our own world today? Yeah, it it plays out because in Psalm 82, again, that's sort of the the textbook example. In the very first verse, God Elohim is presiding over a council, an assembly of Elohim. Mm -hmm. That's where the concept really, you know, takes hold. And that is part of, because of, of what's happening in the Psalm, God is judging these other Elohim who are over the nations, but are corrupt. That goes all the way back to Deuteronomy 32, eight and nine, where the nations were assigned allotted to the other gods and the other gods to them. Again, it, it's part of the judgment at Babel mm-hmm. when the nations are scattered. God essentially divorces them. He disinherits them from a direct relationship with him. And he puts them under the authority of the sons of God, Deuteronomy 32, eight. So they become corrupt. They seduce the Israelites into worshiping them. And that's mm-hmm. why they're being judged in Psalm 82. Well, this whole worldview that the world is really Israel, Yahweh's own domain. That's Deuteronomy 32, nine. And all the other nations are under dominion of other gods who become hostile to Yahweh. So Yahweh against the gods, Israel against the nations. Paul inherits this worldview. And these other gods are the principalities, the powers, the thrones, the dominions, all these geographical dominion terms that Paul uses. So for in the Ephesians of 6, 12, when he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, human right, opponents, right. but against principalities, powers. He's talking about literal evil intelligences. Right. He's, that he's talking about evil intelligences that, that have the, the, the nations under dominion. And in a, in a New Testament context, again, Old Testament frames it as nations versus Israel. Israel's the people of God. The New Testament, again, that sort of, you know, fades into the, into the background because you have the church, which is this circumcision neutral you mm-hmm. know, body, Jew and Gentile. And so then the, the, the conflict becomes really everywhere that the presence of God, you know, is, and that's in believers, there's spiritual conflict wherever they are, not just again in the 70 nations that the Old Testament writer knew that are listed in Genesis 10, but everywhere on the globe, God's plan is to use believers to take dominion over every place. Again, not just what we're restricted to in the Old Testament worldview, but every place. Again, the advance of the kingdom of God is framed really in spiritual warfare terms. We're used to hearing about the kingdom of God and doing nice things to your neighbor mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. witnessing to people. And, and, and those aren't excluded, but the Bible actually from the get go frames it in terms of a spiritual conflict. And it all culminates at Zion, right. God's cosmic mountain. Right. That is the final conflict again for all the marbles. Hmm. It brings the conflict, the, nar- the biblical narrative into sharp focus. Uh, We recommend this book. It is uh, now available, The Unseen Realm, coming soon to the Skywatch TV store. Dr. Michael Heiser is the author. Mike, thanks for your work. We appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.